Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar. And this is the first course on Samasa. We begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Baribharti Sanjariharti Leelaya Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Baribharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya We have been studying the process of compounding the theoretical basis of it so far in this particular course. We have studied the Karaka theory and then also the Samartha theory. We also studied through the traditional sources, notably the Samartha Nika, where we quoted passages from it and saw how Patanjali interpreted the word Samartha in four different ways. We noted that Patanjali stated that the two interpretations, namely the Samprekshitartha and Sambadhartha Samartha to the Vyapeksha view of Samarthya and Sangatartha and Samsrishtartha interpretations to the Ekarthi Bhava view of Samarthya. We have also studied the basic processes, the sequence of processes which facilitate the derivation of the compounding. Now we are studying the sutras, the rules within Paninian grammar which state these various stages. We have seen that Samartha Padavidhi is the Sutra 211 which lays down the foundation, the basic, very basic semantic condition, namely the Samarthatva, namely the Samarthya, namely that the words should be interrelated. The non-interrelated words cannot be or are not compounded by the speakers. And those who want to construct the compounds should take care that the words are interrelated. This basic condition is stated by Samarthaha Padavidhi. Then we also saw that the name of the process, namely Samasa, is stated by Prak Kadarat Samasaha. Then we studied the very basic necessary condition, which is Saha Supa. We also noted that the later Paninian grammatical tradition has interpreted this sutra in a very generic manner and has accounted for several compound usages which otherwise do not find any justification in the sutras composed by Panini and such compounds came to be known as Supsup Samasa or Kevala Samasa. Then we also saw the Purva Pada Nirdharana and the sutras dealing with this. As soon as the Alaugika Vigraha takes place, the Purva Pada Nirdharana also happens. And this Purva Pada Nirdharana is dependent on the Upasarjana Saudhnya, which is also defined by Panini. And once this Purvapada Nirdharana happens, the process of compounding continues. Then we studied the rules which state the subluk, which is extremely important. Subluk. 
we saw that supodhatu pratibhadika yoho 2471 is that sutra which states the deletion of the sup this deletion is recorded as the zero substitute in the system of paninian grammar by this particular sutra namely supodhatu pratipadika yoho we also noted that this sutra also allows a pratipadika to retain both the features of the pratipadika as well as the pada and on this basis certain paninian sutras also operate like nalopa pratipadikantasya now let us proceed further and find out some other processes which are rule governed in the derivation of the compounding as stated in the paninian grammar in this lecture so in this lecture we will primarily devote ourselves to studying the process called purva pada karya after the samasanta pratyaya is added and after the sub luk happens then we know which is a purva pada which is an uttara pada now and then there are certain operations that are done on the purva pada and those are called the purva pada purva pada is in fact a technical term defined by the paninian grammatical tradition as the initial member of the compound and the final member of the compound is termed as uttara pada so if you have a compound having only two members the initial member is the purva pada and the second member is the uttara pada because it is also the final member of the compound but when there are more than two padas which get compounded together at the same time which happens in the case of a bahurihi compound or also in the case of the dvandva compound then we note that the first member initial member is the purva pada and the final member is the uttara pada and the members of the compound which are in between they are not termed anything because they don't undergo any operation as such now if we stick ourselves currently to the compounds which have two constituents where the initial member is called the purva pada and the second member of the compound second constituent of the compound is termed as uttara pada we see that in the environment of this uttara pada certain modifications take place in the purva pada they are related to for example non deletion of sup now this is happening happening only in the environment of uttara pada mind you non deletion of sup which is generally stated as a by default process we saw earlier so such non deletion of sup is called aluk and sometimes aluk is considered to be a separate category of compounds which is not necessary aluk is not a separate category aluk happens in different compounds in certain conditions only in the uttara pada environment now these purva pada karyas are also related to gender sometimes so some gender is to be conveyed and then the suffixes denoting a particular gender they get removed also there is modification in the morphological form the purva pada gets this kind of modification also sometimes modification in the phonological part of the purva pada these are all the operations that happen on the purva pada and these are called the purva pada karya and mostly they happen in the environment of the uttara pada sometimes there are some other environments also stated in the paninian grammar let us study them one by one first of all we should know that all these purva pada karyas and some others they are stated in the section 6.3 where the adhikara is uttara pade 
So the first sutra in 6.3 is Aluk Uttarapade. And Uttarapade is the Adhikara that continues up to the end of 6.3, that is 138. Aluk Uttarapade. So in the environment of Uttarapada, immediately before an Uttarapada, obviously before an Uttarapada, there is a Purvapada in most of the cases. So there is an operation stated to the Purvapada. So Uttarapada means that immediately before a, an Uttarapada, assuming that the Purvapada precedes, assuming that the process of compounding also happens in between two padas at a time in most of the cases. So the first of such Purvapada Karyas as listed earlier is Aluk. This is stated from 631 up to 24. Aluk, as the name says, is the non-deletion of soap in the Purvapada. Aluk is never stated in the Uttarapada. Uttarapada sup is always deleted, but Purvapada sup sometimes, in some exceptional conditions, is not deleted, is retained. But this Purvapada aluk is stated in the environment of Uttarapada only. This operation acts as exception to the by default process of deletion of sup, which is part of the derivation of the compound. So aluk is not to be treated as a separate type of compound. This is common to several types of compounds. Here is an example. Shastya Akroshe 6321. What this means is that immediately before an Uttarapada Uttarapade, Shashti is not deleted. Shashtyaha aluk. When the sense of censure is to be denoted by the compound, akroshe. So if you have chorasya kulam as the laukika vigraha, chorasya kulam, the family of the thief, the alaukika vigraha of it is chora plus nas plus kula plus su, chora plus ngas plus kula plus su. So this is one subanta, this is another subanta. And now, Shastya Akroshe says that if you have censure, it as the meaning to be conveyed out of this compound, you don't delete this ngas. So you retain it and let it be in its own form. So you have chorasya kula as the finally derived output of the compound. The only distinction would be Aikapadya, Aikarthya and Aikasvarya. But still the look will be retained. But still the look will not happen and the Shasti Pratyaya will be retained. This is a look. Similarly you have Panchamyaha Stoka Dibhya 632. What this means is that immediately before an Uttarapada, Uttarapade, Panchami suffixes are not deleted. Panchamyaha Aluk, which are added after the words Stoka etc. Stoka Dibhya. I repeat, immediately before an Uttarapada, Uttarapade, Panchami suffixes are not deleted, panchamyaha aluk, which are added after the words stoka, etc. So, for example, we have stokad muktaha as the laukika vigraha, apeta podha mukta patita patrastaihi alpashaha. This is the sutra which will trigger the process of compounding in between these two words. So, we have stokad muktaha. One who is released on very little. So we have stoka plus nasi, this is the alaukika vidraha, plus mukta plus su. And generally, because this is a compound, supodhatuk pratipadika yoho will say that this su and this nasi, they both need to be 
deleted. So, Podhatu Pratipadika Yoho. This is a Pratipadika and this is part of the Pratipadika and so this needs to be deleted. But this particular sutra says that such a Panchami Pratyaya added after Stoka should not be deleted. So this Nasi is retained. So you have Stokad and Mukta and then finally you get Stoka and Mukta as the compound output. The difference is Aikapadya etc. The other important Purva Padakarya is called Pumvad Bhava, which is extremely important. And this is a hallmark, this is a feature of Bhavrihi compound mainly and also the Karma Dharaya compound of the Tatpurusha type. So Pumvad Bhava is a very important Karya and Purva Padakarya at that. What this means is that the feminine form of the Purvapada is being substituted by the non-feminine root form of the Pratipatika. I repeat, the feminine form of the Purvapada is being substituted by the non-feminine root form of the Pratipatika. This is what is called Pumvad Bhava. This operation takes place in the environment of the Uttarapada following immediately because Uttarapada is there. Once again, it is to be noted that this operation takes place only on Purvapada and never on Uttarapada. Very important. So this is stated by the Sutra Striyapum Vat Bhashitapum Skadanung Samanadhikarane Striyam Apurani Priyadishu. This is the sutra. I repeat. Striyapum Vatu Bhashitapum Skadanum Samanadhikarane Striyam Apurani Priyadishu. And this continues up to Pumvat Karmadharaya Jatiya Deshiya Yoho. This is in 6.3 once again. So speci- specific technical, semantic and formal environments play role in this particular operation of Pumvad Bhava. As we see that the term Bhashita Pumska is involved, the term Samanadhikarane is involved and after the explanation of these two, the Pumvad Bhava operation becomes extremely clear. Here is an example. The meaning intended is one whose grasping intellect is stable. So we have sthita pradnya yasya saha as the laukika vigraha or sthira buddhir yasya saha. So we have the laukika vigraha sthira buddhir yasya saha and the alaukika vigraha is sthira plus su plus buddhi plus su. Now we know that sthira has got this a at the end which is a feminine suffix a added to the root word sthira and this feminine suffix obviously indicates the feminine gender which is in accordance with its qualification of buddhi. So buddhi is what is qualified. This is in feminine gender. So this adjective of sthira is also added with the feminine suffix a. Sthira buddhiri yasya saha. Sthira plus su, buddhi plus su. Now in this particular case, both these word elements, sthira and buddhi, they are referring to one and the same entity called buddhi or the intellect. So this is termed as samanadhi karana status of both the words. And so the conditions for the sutra striya pumvat bhashita pumskad anung samanadhi karane striyam apurani priyadishu. Those conditions are fulfilled and as a result after the subluk takes place 
stira zero plus buddhi plus zero, then this a, which is a feminine suffix, is removed, and this word is taken back to its root form, this which is stira. So stira becomes stira, and this is what is termed as umvad bhava, and so we have stira buddhi. The finally derived output is sthira buddhi. So sthira buddhi does not contain a feminine suffix in the purva pada due to some semantic conditions and the sutra which states umvad bhava. The operation happened. The operation that happened on the purva pada. Is described as purva pada karya, which is the pumad bhava over here. More of this operation would be explained in detail when we deal with the karma dharaya compound and also bahuvrihi types of compounds. With delineation of the specific environments stated in the sutra. Striya pumvat, bhashita pumska danung, samanadhi karane, striyam apurani priyadishu, along with the exceptions and also more and more examples. So we find that such examples with the pumad bhava are profusely used by the Sanskrit speakers, and that is one of the reasons why the theoretical explanation had to be provided in the grammar. And its system that Panini has already provided. This is an extremely important purva pada karya, namely the pumad bhava. Then we have certain morphological modifications that happen in the purva pada, and so they are listed as purva pada karya. So, for example, we have the sutra. Hima Kashi Hatishu Cha. This is six three fifty four. So Padasya continues from six three fifty two and Pat from six three fifty three. What this sutra means is that immediately before an uttara pada, in the form of Hima Kashi and Hati, substitute pada by Pat. I repeat, immediately before an uttara pada. In the form of Hima Kashi and Hati, and the sutra says Hima Kashi Hati Shu Cha. Hima Kashi Hati Shu is the seventh case plural, which matches with the seventh case of Uttara Pada. So obviously, these are the Uttara Padas. So when they are the Uttara Padas, the preceding Purva Pada in the form of a Pada is to be substituted by Pad. Pada is the Purva Pada. And it is to be substituted by pat in these three environments. So now, if you have the meaning going by feet, and you have the logika vakya as pada bhyam hati hi, pada bhyam hati hi, this can be written in the form of an alogika vigraha in this fashion: pada plus bhyam plus hati plus su. And now this is termed as a samasa, so this will be termed as a pratipadika. And after that, we shall apply two four seventy one, and then this su bhyam and this su that will be deleted. So we have pada plus hati. Now this is very interesting how the word hati is used. Hati is derived from the verbal root hana with the suffix ti. Now there are two meanings of the root hana as listed in the dhatu patha, namely gati and himsa. So hana himsa gatyo ho. That is the dhatu part entry, and it is very popular for us to know that hana means to kill. This is very popular and also used in several words. But when hana means gati, what happens and where is this used? And you shall find that it is used in this particular example. So hati here means the action of going. So 
Hana plus ti and finally we have hati. Hati means the action of going. Hana means to go. Ti means the state or the action. And so hati means the action of going. And this Purvapada, Padabhyam, this is linked with the action of going in the sense of Karana. So this Pada is the Karana. So Pada is the most effective means of the action of going. So that's why Padabhyam Hati. That's why there is this interrelation, the Karaka interrelation. And so because of this interrelatedness, both these Padas get compounded and we have Pada plus Bhyam plus Hati plus Su as the Alaukika Vigraha termed as Samasa and because then it is termed as Pratipadika, so we apply 2471, so Podhatu Pratipadika Yoho, which deletes both Bhyam and Su, which are the part of the Pratipadika, and so we get Pada plus 0 plus Hati plus 0. Now 6354 applies, and in the environment of Uttarapada Hati, substitutes this Pada by Pat. So we have Pat plus 0 plus Hati plus 0. Eventually it is Pat plus Hati. And then this the is substituted by the by Jhalam Jashonte. So we have Pad plus Hati. And then finally we have this her substituted by the by the Sutra Jayoho Nyatarasyam. And so we get the form Padhati, which is the finally derived compound output. Paddhati. Now Paddhati literally means going by feet. Nowadays in the modern Indian languages, the word Paddhati has acquired several different meanings. Most notable amongst them is the way of doing, the habit. That is what Paddhati means. But the meaning of the word Paddhati as derived by Paninian grammar in this particular fashion is this, going by feet. Obviously there is some correlation between this meaning and the other meaning that is associated with this word in modern Indian languages. What is important here is that the word Pada undergoes the operation of substitution by Pat. And this is the Purvapada Karya happening in the environment of the Uttarapada. In this case, it is Hati. Finally, we have the Purvapada Karya in the form of phonological operation. So, for example, when we deal with the Nay Tatpurusha compound, which is prescribed by Sutra. 2269. Then we have another sutra stated in 6373, Nalopo Nayaha. This gets operationalized. What this sutra says is that immediately before an Uttarapada, sound na of nai is deleted. As simple as that. This operation is part of the derivation of Nai Tatpurusha compound prescribed by the Sutra Nai 2.2.6. This is an example. The meaning is one who is not a Brahmin but is similar to a Brahmin. Tadbhinna Tatsadrusha. That is as the meaning of Nai. So we start the derivation process by the Laukika Vigraha, namely Na Brahmanaha. Now we go to the Alaukika Vigraha, which is Na plus Su, Nai plus Su, and Brahmana plus Su. Now this is a compound, this is a Samasa, and so it becomes a Pratipadika, and that is the reason why both these Su's, they get deleted by Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho. So we have Na plus Zero plus Brahmana plus Zero. Then we apply 6373 Nalopo Nayaha, which deletes this consonant na in nai and so we get a and brahmana and then finally we get the compound output in the form of a brahmana. So deletion of this na is an important phonological operation purvapadakarya stated by nalopo nayaha.
to summarize the operations which affect the purva pada shape the form of the final output of the compound these operations always take place in the environment of the uttara pada immediately following and they are completely internal in many cases purva padas with or, or without these operations resemble the vocative singular form of the pratipadika also stated in the passage quoted from patanjali's vyakarana mahabhashya these are the texts referred to from the traditional sources and we shall deal with the processes in the next lecture thank you for your patience